Welcome to this video. We will be looking at the use of a scroll bar on a table and also on a chart. And to demonstrate this, we've got a, a, a set of data. It is about 30 months of data, not quite. Two types of information, fitness and strength. And for each of those two types, there is data for athlete A and athlete B. So I'm just going to start building a table here because that'll be helpful as we start to get this underway. And just to do the initial demonstration of offset, I'm just going to put numbers 1 to 6 here. So the offset function requires three variables as you can see in the little formula screen tip. The first one is a reference point. So we want to be able to tell it this is where you start from and the final two variables say how many rows and columns you move before you stop so I'm going to put that in lockdown but just the row number so this is saying that I want you to start from cell A2 go down one row because that's the cell here and go across zero rows. Just format that as a date. I think I'll put a custom type in. And drag down. So as you can see, offset is a relatively wanted to drag that across I will just lock G great so there we are we've got a table using the offset function this isn't what we want we want to be able to interact with this particular table and then later on a graph using the scroll bar. So to get going with that, I'm just going to add from the developer tab a scroll bar. I'm going to do a vertical one for the table. I'm going to format the control. I want the minimum value to be 1. I want the maximum value to be 24. The reason for that is that we have got 30 rows of data and we're trying to show 6. So I'm just going to reference to that empty cell at the moment. So if we play with the scroll bar, it goes up and down as you can see. Uh, one thing that if you haven't played with these before is if you just click anywhere on the bar it advances by what's called a page amount so if we go back to that format you can see the page changed three if I made that five each time I click that it goes in advance of five just make that look slightly better great all right so what I want to be able to do now is adjust this formula that I've used here and turn it into something a little bit more um, useful to demonstrate the scroll bar. So instead of moving just one, I am going to move based upon the scroll bar. So that works great for this particular value here. <clears throat> and those two particular values, as we can see for June 2011, we've got 35 and 36, and that matches up right there. But I can't just drag this down because what it's going to do is just pull the same value across. So I need to plus one. So I could do that manually, but I don't like doing that. 
So I'm just going to use a little formula that is going to increment that for me. So I'm just going to use the rows formula, and we've seen this before in some of my previous tutorials. It's a great way to simply increment a formula. So if I now drag this across, I can now scroll through from January all the way down to my last value, May 2012, and just have a little snapshot here. And if I were to just inch this into the table, I can make it quite nice looking and have people able to work through a scroll bar to see a snapshot table. So this data could be 10,000 rows long, and this particular dashboard table could be on another page. So uh, using a scroll bar in a table, great way to easily interact with some uh, larger data set. So what I'm going to do just to progress further is just put a basic chart in place. So I shouldn't have to do too much to this chart and it will work already because all it's really doing is taking data from this table. I don't have to use any dynamic ranges or anything like that. I've simply um, really just drawn from a table, so very simple graphing process. With a few clicks, I can make it look a bit better. So there we are. There we've got a basic chart. What I wanted to do was um, take the scroll bar off this graph and I wanted to add one to the chart. Now if I was going to be doing that it's much more intuitive to me to have the scroll bar be horizontal. And so I found the easiest way is just to delete and start again. So we should know this from last time. One. 24 and we can use a page change of 5 so let's see how this works that's great what I'll probably do I usually do this kind of stuff at the end but I want to do it now let's put that scroller on the chart so it's a lot easier to get your head around. Great, so there we go. Pretty simple little example of a scroll bar, both on a table and on a graph. Um, just for good practice, what I'm going to do is just add one more layer of complexity to this, I want to add an option button. And what that option button will do is allow us to choose between which type of data we want to have on the graph. So our table has both fitness and strength. At the moment we're only looking at fitness stuff so let's provide our users with the option of looking at strength as well so whenever you use an option control you've got some formats so format control for a option box really only requires a cell link so I'm going to use one that won't be moved or deleted so I tend to use it somewhere inside a table and what we'll find it's not particularly well aligned Oops. is that it knows those two are related to each other and that one and two changes every time I click on the box so now 
what I want it to be able to do is look through either this table or this table depending on what my option is selected. So I'm going to modify this formula here. So I will use an if equation. So that's what I want. If it's 1, choose the fitness index. But if it's not one, I want it to choose from the next index. And in fact, I'm unnecessarily doing this because the date will always be the same. But nevertheless, it's uh, it's okay practice. down just using that formula incrementer again Let's see what happens if I drag this across. Alright, so we're okay at the start, but still that hasn't changed. So I need to be able to manipulate this formula a little bit. Instead of choosing from B, I need it to choose from D. needs to choose from the a few more things to change on this one needs to choose from D there and that one needs to choose from E so I should be able to drag that down <coughs> all right so Just a little error in that formula it didn't lock that down. So I'll just do that now. And one more. We should be good to go. Great. So we've got an option button on there. That works pretty well. Uh, again, good practice. Let's put an extra title in. So just add click inside the formula bar, click on that cell, and that way it can be a dynamic title. Pull them just a little bit out of the way. So Graph changes. Tidy things up a little bit. Got a scroll bar. Scroll through some data. Select the data source. 
and you're away. What I often like to do is reminds me just going to group these objects and that way if I decide I want to move things around everything moves together so um, I often like to place the graph over a table so that things just don't look too messy so there we are scroll bar scroll chart linked titles grouping objects and covering up the table. Thanks for stopping by.